want to briefly talk about, Dr. Paz talked about the politics in, in the United States, and you know, people ask me all the time, why can't we do this in the United States? Well, the main reason is the FDA considers not only your cells to be new drugs, but certainly any donated, any donated cells and, and, and even your cells, they consider to be new drugs. If you take them out of the body and then you put them in a different place, they're new cells. The only ones that are exempt are your bone marrow. You can take your bone marrow stem cells out, freeze them down, and then have chemotherapy and radiation to wipe out your bone marrow. And then under an exemption, it's not FDA approved, but ex under exemption, you can have those readministered to you once you're on the brink of death and, you know, trying to bring you back. Uh, that's the only stem cell treatment that's actually allowed in the United States under current FDA regulations. Uh, in my humble opinion, I think that cellular therapy, particularly autologous, from your own body to your own body, uh, shouldn't be any business of the FDA. It should be under your local state medical authority and your medical boards, and doctors should be able to practice medicine, that, uh, particularly with your own cells. And I think this does extend, when, when the knowledge base increase, I think this should extend also to well-qualified laboratories who can process umbilical cord cells. Um, uh, for regenerative purposes. But, you know, here are examples of th everybody, uh, you know, we come under attack a few times a day. Um, you know, I mean, certain people don't want, don't want adult stem cells to go forward. In fact, there's a consortium of, of people that were very against the Texas, the Texas law, which I'm going to talk about in a second. And they were all adult stem cell companies because they all have a dog in the hunt. They have a procedure, they have a, they have a cell type, they have, a, they have a, a, a medical device that harvests cells, and they're all like, no way, Jose, can you do this? And they, they, they all got together and bought a full page ad in Nature and said, you know, Texas shouldn't do this. It was a big flurry before the Texas vote, which happened a week ago yesterday. Um, but here are examples of things that we do in the United States all day long. We transplant hearts, livers, lungs, kidneys, corneas, skin, tendons, you name it, we transplant it. Are those FDA approved? Not a single one. Not a single one. The drugs that suppress your immune system so that, you're, you're, so that you can receive that heart and survive, those are FDA approved. But the transplant isn't. It's a procedure. It's exempt. So the, the number of stem cells in a heart far exceeds any stem cell treatment we've ever done. And we do that every day in the United States. We do all these organs. So I think we're in a, in a, in a, in a, in a place of ignorance. And ultimately, uh, ultimately, these, I think, should be exempt as well. And it should fall under the practice of medicine. That's my opinion. Um, two examples of things that were just horribly opposed. First was bariatric surgery back in the 70s. Man, if you were a surgeon and you performed a bariatric surgery, you, they pretty much ran you out of town. Now, I see billboards, right? Liposuction. The first guy to do liposuction, the guy from Dallas, he was run out of every plastic surgery meeting. You know, they'd sit him down and say, buddy, you got to quit doing that. He just, you just can't do that. Uh, you know, a million procedures last year, right? The, the incidence side effects is like 0.02%. So those are two examples. And another example from medical history is there was an Australian guy, and I wish I could remember his name. He, he, showed, he discovered that there was, a, instead of stress and too much stomach acid causing ulcers, it was actually a bacterium called H. pylori, Helicobacter pylori. And he demonstrated, you know, very scientifically, very rigorously, and there's a famous video of him. So, so you, you, you know he's going up against billions of dollars in net profit of pharmaceutical if, if stomach acid doesn't cause these ulcers. Well, why are they going to take our stuff, right? So there's a famous video of him at an at a gastro, international gastroenterology meeting uh, with all of his colleagues. And he, he, he comes in. They introduce him. He comes in. Everybody stands up en masse, turns around, and walks out the door. Two years ago, we received the Nobel Prize. Standard of care, so there's violent opposition. I think we're in that violent opposition phase here. Uh, two years ago, we received the Nobel Prize. The standard of care for, for ulcers now is basically antibiotics and, and some other things to help the antibiotics kill the bacteria. And we test for the bacteria, and, uh, and once it's eradicated, we know you're not gonna have ulcers anymore. But when, when you're going against a lot of money, and uh, you know, sometimes the truth takes a little while to come out. And I think we might be there. So Holly Huber's here, 
And uh, as I mentioned before, she's, she's a, an outspoken advocate and a uh, patient of ours. And uh, she, Governor Rick Perry uh, met her a couple years ago in San Diego, and she told him all about stem cells. He didn't know anything about stem cells then. Last summer, Governor Perry had stem cell treatment in Texas. And according to his wife, he wouldn't have been able to go on the presidential campaign trail because he was in so much pain had he not got the stem cells. He had a very good result. And so he said, why can't we do this in Texas? We ought to, we ought to pass a law. So he sent a, he sent a letter to the medical board, talked to all the members of the medical board. And, uh, and last week, on the 13th of April at 12.39 p.m., the Texas Medical Board okayed the use of adult stem cells by doctors so long as they have an institutional review board of the safety uh, of, of the, basically the risk and risk ratio for the patient, and they sign an informed consent. So you can thank Holly for that. Thank you, Holly. <laughs> at least partially. Right. So we don't know how the FDA, you know, the FDA is, is not, taking uh, any position officially. They're, they're issuing letters and guidance, but there, there's been no official, uh, no official position, and we're expecting that to come out in the, in the coming six or eight months. So uh, pending that, we don't really want to do anything in Texas because we don't want to have any trouble with the FDA. But write your congressman and let them know how you feel. Um, so I'm going to close with a, a short video. It's about five, five or six minutes, and it's a montage of three patients who have come to us, Trish, um, also Juan Carlos that I talked to, and another gentleman that I didn't talk about. And I'll, I'm just going to close with this. We can watch the video, and at the end of the video, we have refreshments. Uh, we're going to have a little bit of chow. And if anybody wants to hang around and talk to Dr. Paz, myself, Holly, or Trish to talk to the patient side of things, uh, we'll, we'll spread out in 15, 20 minutes after this is done. Everybody's had a drink and if uh, it's something to eat. And if you have to go and you don't want to stay and talk about it, there's a blue piece of paper that you can fill out and we'll get back to you. Um, anyway, here we go. I was injured in 2007. I suffered a spinal cord injury. My husband and I were on vacation in Mexico, and um, we were riding a quad on the beach, and the tide had went way out, and we hit a sandbar, and the quad flipped. Well, what happened to me? I had a, an airplane accident three years ago. I'm a commercial pilot. Okay, T6 is a high break. It's basically from here up. So basically I was just arms and a head. The doctors told me that I had a complete injury in my spine and that I wasn't going to walk again. I had no movement or feeling from my bra strap level down and I was told right away by doctors there Oh, she'll never walk again. They, they told my parents that before they even got to see me and, um, and my husband, so it's pretty traumatic. The medicines that they give me, even though they stop my spasms, they dissolve my muscle. So it's kind of works against you. You know, I want to walk again, but my muscle is being ate by the medicines that they're giving me. I fractured my T12, T... T11, T12, L1, and L2. I always said, I'm not a watcher, I'm a doer. You know, I, I go do things who are very active and, and I didn't want this one to accept this injury. But I worked my hardest for two months inpatient. And then I went to outpatient therapy for six months after that. And I just worked really hard. I'm, I was always athletic and I always continued to be strong and work hard. From my waist down, I had nothing, no, no sensibility, no movement no control of nothing and well I was uh, an Asia 8 I think that is a complete paraplegic person I just knew I couldn't live like this I couldn't live dragging myself from one side of a bed to another 
I couldn't live like that. They told me, you have to create in your mind that, you know, that you're not going to walk again and you have to get used to the wheelchair. There are so many people that are dying and are have a decreased quality of life that could be helped. The promise is there, and it's not just me saying that, it's the whole scientific community. There are no ethical or moral arguments against using adult stem cells since nobody is harmed in the, in the isolation or in anywhere in the process. But we're doing a lot of work with spinal cord injury. So far, uh, over 50 patients have been treated. Within about three months, I was down there. I, I, I signed up right away, and but of course we researched, because it's very important to feel safe and all that stuff. So we did a lot of research, and we felt comfortable. In that time, I was uh, talking with uh, my physiotherapist there in Costa Rica, and she told me about the stem cell treatment. Um, well, I decided to, to do it. Within two months of getting the therapy, I had my whole core back. Like my, I mean, my heart, I could make my abs hard again. All the way to here, my whole abs, back, hip flexors, but we're working really good, and my obliques, and my booty. And my first treatment was in November 2008. The change that I had was in my neuropathic pains, that it passed from 10 to three, like in a, maybe in two weeks. And then I come across a lady's blog that's been down here, Trish. And uh, I called her a couple times and she said she thought the same way. And uh, she's actually walking with braces at her knees from her stem cells. And within three and a half months of getting my, treat my second treatment, I'm now, my knees were starting to lock. I got half braces now below my knees, so that we're, it's not locking my knees. And now for the first time in January, at the very end of January, I started walking with the walker. It's really slow. Since my stem cells, I guess the best way I, I can do is just show you. And uh, reality's reality. I had my fourth treatment in November last year. And in that time, in one year, I recovered my right leg. I um, stopped using uh, my crutches and I was using a cane. Uh, I'm driving a manual transmission car. I compete in four by four races. I just passed last year my physical. And the pilot, the commercial pilot physical, and I started to fly again. I'm just so blessed that I, that I was put in contact with you guys, and it's very life-changing. I know when I lifted myself up there, I give myself some Charlie horses. I do it every time. But that, do you see how I lifted myself up? Yeah. That's reality. This is not uh, like a miracle cure, but I think for us, the, the patients and the, our parents, all the relatives. It is a, cure, a miracle cure. So that, that concludes our program. I want to thank you guys uh, for coming. I really appreciate it. And uh, if uh, we have refreshments in the back, and again, we'll be circulating if anybody wants to talk to talk to us, we'd be happy to talk further. But anyway, thank you very much for coming. Appreciate it.